Hello everyone and welcome back to more Cinderella Phenomenon! We are back for more of this game! <laughs> because in the last episode, we just finished up um, our second guide to romance in, you know, to do his route, which is Karma! We finished Karma's route completely, we got his good ending after getting his bad ending the first time. And his good ending worked out for the most part, except the whole fact that Fritz died. <laughs> Fritz died in that whole coup thing with like uh, Sir Alcaster. Sir Alcaster got, you know, managed to get a blow with him and then he died because of it and yeah, but anyways, regardless, the king got his throne back, Alcaster was arrested and he's gonna be set up for trial and we got together with Karma! Karma explained everything about his curse, which is like the whole Beauty and the Beast thing. He was both Beauty and the Beast. It's like if he actually falls in love with somebody, like truly, then the curse, his curse of everybody falling in love with him gets like nullified and then he gets turned into a beast and then that's when people start like kind of you know getting scared of him but no we're different we're like nah it's fine you whatever and that's how he broke his curse it's from true love you know despite he was like he was in this beast form so yeah so you know he went back to his kingdom visited his family came back in time for our birthday we made out a little bit on our bed and then yeah we we lived happily ever after that was great so now we're here we're back here our next guy to romance which is rumple so as you guys can see i skipped on ahead to the part where we we came into the marching and after I skipped that on that one choice where we first met Rumpel, if you guys remember, is when you know they brought him in. He has amnesia and he's like being really stupid and silly. And we were like, can we throw the, the food tray at him or not? And we chose to. And the first time around when I did this is that we threw it at him, and that's what gave. That's what can get us a point with him, which is funny enough. So yeah, I'm like super interested to get into get into Rumpel's route just because like he's uh, again, he's a very interesting guy. <laughs> Not somebody I would necessarily go, you know, right off the bat, go for right off the bat, but we're here. We're here to find out if, you know, maybe there's definitely more there's de depth to his character other than that he's just this really flowery, really flirty, really silly, I don't know, a masochist sort of guy. So let's go, let's get right to it. So this is the first of two uh, instances in which we can ask for certain people to help us in advice on how to break our own curse. So instead of, of course, going, you know, from Rod to Karma, and of course, uh, as you guys can see, the list is a lot longer because of the fact that we have unlocked uh, Fritz's and Waltz's route now, but of course, we're not going to get into them until after we're done Rumple. So anyways, yes, let's go. Rumple, let's ask him. <laughs> I suppose I can ask Rumple. Enough girls seem to like him, so he might have sound advice. I find Rumple in between his orders and pull him aside. He looks oddly relieved. Okay. Ah, princess, you saved me. Oh, well, I saved you. Ah, uh, from a heine from a from heinous from a heinous workload overload of work. Oh, wow. I am pretty sure Rumpel does less around here than me. At least I finish the work I am given, unlike Rumpel, who gets distracted by every single thing. <laughs> Dear Hana, if you've come, if you've called me here, then you must want to confess something to me. What? <laughs> Perhaps you'll confess your undying love for me? No, I, I'm here to confess that I actually am needing advice from you on how to break my curse. I scowl at him and cross my arms. I came to ask you for advice, but perhaps I'll go ask someone else, right? You came to ask my advice? Yes. Rumple stares at me, clearly shocked. I guess it is because out of all the people I would ask, he probably seems the least likely. I know, right? Didn't see that coming, right? <laughs> then I will assist, my sweet princess. Oh my gosh. What kind of advice are you looking for? Perhaps you'd like to learn how to make a man swoon, or how to stroke the embers of the heart. No! Is is the f is flirting the only thing that he is that is ever on his mind? Yes, that's like his default mode. I came because I want you to teach me about goodness. Yes, goodness. But my sweet, all of the advice that I just suggested would teach you just that. No, being romantic will not teach me how to do good. Rumpel dramatically places his hand over his heart. I'm wounded, but being romantic is good. <laughs> Don't you see the smiles on the lovely ladies' faces when I speak with them? I cannot imagine why they smile like that. Rumpel's persistence is annoying. Uh-huh, I'd have to agree with you on that. For now, for now. To be, the rom to be romantic and loving, that is the epitome of goodness. Show someone affection and they will return it twofold. Really? 
I can only stare at Rumpel as I wonder why I even decided to ask him. Because I made you, and we're here for his rout. Or you could just be kind. Everyone is kind in their own way, princess. So what do you say? But that's the thing, I don't know how to be kind at this point. What is the definition of being kind? Perhaps you would like to practice on me. I'm sure your smile would burn up my week. No, I'm certain of it. I have work. <laughs> Bye. I quickly turn and leave before Rumpel can continue. If I have to be romantic to earn a good deed, I'd rather be cursed like this forever. <laughs> uh. Anyways, yeah, so we're going to skip on ahead to the second instant and we can ask him for help again and then that will secure our route choices and then we can move on to actually going into his route. So yes, let's go do that. Okay, Rumpel, here we go. Here we come again. Today, who would I ask for help? I will ask Rumpel once again. I find Rumpel taking a break at one of the tables. Surprisingly, he is by himself and not surrounded by the usual blushing ladies. You are not surrounded by a flock of ladies. You must have done something to offend them. Rumpel looks at me, the surprise apparent on his face. Princess, have you come to mend my broken heart? No. Excuse me? <laughs> I was speaking with a lady here only hours ago when she told me that she was betrothed to someone else. That happened hours ago and you are still sitting here? <laughs> wow, he's, uh, he falls in love really easily. Rumpel places his chin on the palm of his hand, looking very tired. In mourning, the heart is a fragile thing, princess. Uh, won't you help heal my shattered heart? No. <laughs> Rumpel stares at me when I do not answer. Uh, that would count as a good deed, you know. Yeah, but no. Helping you would count as a good deed? Yes. Well, I, well whoops. No. Stop that. Well, it has to come from the heart. You have to, be, you have to mean it, you know. Uh, doing things out of the kindness of your heart is a good deed, princess. Yeah, exactly. The kindness of my heart. Why would I want to help you when you've done nothing for me? <laughs> kindness isn't a thing that needs to necessarily be returned, princess. Single instances of affection can make a heart lighter. Why does he always go through the trouble of making his words sound so much fancier? Right? Come on, just talk to me normally. Uh, I will not help you mend your broken heart because that would be in an act of stupidity, not kindness. <laughs> Rumpel's shoulders slump at, slumps as he frowns, yeah. Wow. Ah, now my heart is even more fragmented. You suffer from a broken heart every day you are rejected. Yes, true, of course, because to pour your heart out to someone only to be rejected is a cruel fate, princess. But but my man, you, my dude, you only knew her for like an hour. <laughs> you probably deserve rejection. Hey, no, no, stop that. You probably deserve rejection. What with the way you flirt with everyone. So no, I'm not going to help you. Deal with your own broken heart. <laughs> Dang. I turn around and walk away. The act of Rumpel puts on... The, the, ah, the axe Rumpel puts on are annoying. Yeah, maybe throughout the route, the more we get into it, he'll, you know, he'll surely drop it. I hope. Like, it's a little bit o overbearing right now. But, you know, maybe that's his character development. Where, like, he learns to tone it down. Okay, anyways, I think that's it. That, that will do it. And then we're gonna skip on ahead to actually choosing his route officially. And so, yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Here we are. Yas. Yas, yas. Uh, there he is. The one with the glasses. Rumple, chapter three, the flatterer. The flatterer. Of course he is. Alright. I do not know why the first person that popped into my mind was Rumple, right? Just because he puts a smile on ladies' faces with his flirting does not mean that he can help me do a good deed. Well you just never know. And yet here I am. I find Rumple on break, surrounded by a few giggling ladies. His hands make dramatic sweeping gestures as he showers them with compliments. Uh, oh wow, <laughs> and you, my sweet, are like sunshine peeking through the clouds on a dark day. Oh, you litter the ground with so much golden light and make every flower reach out towards your warmth. Ugh. On second thought, maybe I should reconsider. Too late, you're committed now. Princess! Oh, Rumpo notices me, ho notices me, however, and immediately waves me over. Ah, uh, uh, first choice already, holy shit, okay. Alright. Let's, uh, let's get to it then. Alright. Turn and walk away, walk toward him. Um, I don't know, it's like the thing where it's like, you know, this is a trick question. Trick question? No? Like, do you want- Like, I feel like he- The whole tray throwing thing was like, uh, the, the opposite thing of what he was expecting, right? Should we turn and walk away from him? Or... No, that's the expected thing, right? That he's like, you know, or... Uh, oh, God. <laughs> I 
I would say turn and walk away. I just remember that I have something to do. Let's play hard to get. I turn around to start walking away, but I am immediately stopped when I feel Rumpel's hands on my shoulder. Uh, what? I slap his hand away. Uh, fierce, as always. You remind me of a rose of thorns, princess. He leans closer and winks at me. Uh, but the thorns are what makes the rose so alluring. Are you always so persistent, or do you actually want me to slap you again? Uh, you are slapping me is but a small blockade in the road. I will never give you give up on you, princess. Wow, does he enjoy it when I purposely try to ignore him? Does he? I don't know. <laughs> the most brilliant sparkling gems are buried deep within the ground and take much effort to unearth. What? Princess, you are like one of those gems. Yes, I knew it! <laughs> Do the play hard to get. <laughs> no, I am not like a gem. Uh, Rumpel, why would you deal with someone like her? What? Tana is like a budding flower, and I want to do my best to help her bloom in whatever way I, that I can. Uh, well, you've come to me for advice, right? Yes. How did he know? Uh, the look of shock on your face is adorable, and so absolutely satisfying. It seems I hit the nail right on the head. You got that right. Rumpel, she's obviously too stubborn to admit that she needs your help. These women are infuriating. I know, like, piss off. Oh, well, okay. Really close. Rumpel leans a little closer to me, and suddenly he's whispering in my ear. Let me tell you something, princess. Making a person happy just to see them smile is definitely a good deed. Huh? <laughs> Making someone feel important is never a disservice. What do you think? I'm pretty knowledgeable, aren't I? No. <laughs> I mean, I, he's onto something, but he has a really uh, weird way of kind of like wording it. All, I, all he ever talks about is doting on people, flirting with them, and making them smile. I mean, at the very core of it, he's, got, he's onto something, you know? Rumpo continues talking. Which is why I will make an excellent, excellent partner. Okay. I take a step back. Rumpo is now looking at me with a triumphant smile. How did you... Uh, I am very perceptive, princess. Wow. You overheard my conversation with Parfait? Yes, she told me about it. <laughs> she... did? Uh-huh. Only, only briefly. So you're not perceptive at all. Perceptive at all. <laughs> True, you just eavesdropped. Princess, you cannot see it, but I am drowning in my own tears. Oh, he just assumed I was going to partner- yeah, he, was, he just assumed I was going to be partners with him, which is very annoying. I do, not know, I do not even know why I was considering partnering up with Rumpel when he says the same things over and over again. And I do not think I could be around him day in and day out. Day in and out, yeah. Oh my, what do I spot here? Delora. <laughs> Delora appears before us, a sly smile on her face. Slacking off you two? Well, he is. I'm on a break. Oh, really? That break ended about five minutes ago, Rumpel. And Princess, I think there's a broom that needs attending. I just woke up and got here. Fine. There's no use complaining, and I would rather get away from Rumpel. Rumpel turns to the ladies and smiles. My lovely ladies, I will be back later, and I promise that we will continue our conversation without any interruptions. Oh my gosh. Oh, and Princess. What? We'll continue our conversation at later as well. Uh, uh, I walk off before Rumpel can try to shower more of his compliments onto me. Making a person happy just to see them smile. Can such a thing really be considered a good deed? Yes. Again, at the core, like, I, get, I get where he's coming from, but it's just like the way he's wording it is just like over the top. The days at the tavern go by quickly over the next week. The days, yeah. Um, Princess? What? Princess? What? Uh, you've been staring off into space. Oh, I was just thinking. I just finished using Mr. Broom, and now I am helping Anise sort some of the shelves uh, in the back. Rumpel has taken up the serving for today. Okay. The women always enjoy him, but the men are always glaring at him. <laughs> They're jealous of Rumpel, I think. Really? Who? The men. The other men. Anise looks over at the men that are glaring at Rumpel as he just between tables. Uh, I'm worried about Rumpel too. <laughs> no. What are you talking about? You were looking at Rumpel with a funny expression on your face. I'm just thinking of how stupid he looks. <laughs> no, I wasn't. My words are clipped and my voice is cold. And Nice looks at me sadly, but I do not care. But what I do is none of our business. I think the girls are jealous of you too. What? What? <laughs> I glance around the tavern and notice that the girls are... I, and notice that they are girls glowering at me. I am not accustomed. I am not unaccustomed to these glares since people have always looked at me this way, right? During the times I left the palace, people gave me the same looks, but this feels different somehow. 
Really? Honestly? Why would they be jealous? Uh, because you're Rumpel's partner. They'll take him for all I care. <laughs> I'm not his partner. You're not? He's been telling everyone that you are. Oh my gosh. I never agreed to being his par to being partners with him. Uh, I felt your longing gaze upon my back and I have arrived, my princess. Uh. <laughs> Rumpel suddenly appears before the two of us, smiling brightly. I suddenly I suddenly have the strong urge to slap the smile right off his face. We are not partners. But princess, you asked for my advice. Advice that I gave to you because I care. No one else cares as much about you as I. <laughs> and so I and so I proclaimed us both partners because we are a match made in heaven. Really? You're so overwhelmed with gratitude that you are at a loss for words. If I could throw something at you, I would. <laughs> Same. A punch packed with as much strength as your love. Wow. I can only groan in response. I love- I admire the way he just deflects all of like, her threats though in, into like a more flamboyant positive light. <laughs> that's- that's admirable. Oh my. Hello everyone, it sounds like you're having fun. How is this fun? Rumpel is never fun. All he ever does is spout nonsense. Uh-huh. Uh, he doesn't mean any harm, princess. He's just filled to the brim with so many compliments that he need and he needs to get them off his chest. Well, he can go direct them at one of his many other adoring fans, right? <laughs> I shift my gaze to Rumpel and furrow my eyebrows at him. Uh, or do you only direct them at me because you enjoy how much I ignore you? Uh, I only wanted to help, princess. That's what partners do, right? Aww. But we are not partners. Uh, just try this partnership out, princess. I promise it will be worth your time. Worth your while. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, princess. You can always change partners. Uh, <laughs> Lady Parfait, you've broken my heart. <laughs> you are very good at healing your broken heart by now, princess. Uh, bleh, Rumple. Princess, yeah, he is a princess. He, he acts more like a princess than I do. <laughs> uh, anyway, I am sorry to interrupt. I only need to speak with a niece to make sure she doesn't need any help with a... She doesn't need hel any help with a particular list. A list? Um, a list of herbs for, um, for me. Anise has been nice enough to gather herbs for me. Okay. Uh, Lady Parfait, is this about your body? Yes, medicine. What's wrong with your body? Oh, uh, it's nothing to concern yourself with, princess. My body is just a little frail because of the, bur the burden on it. That's right. Parfait mentioned having to bear the Castilian Lucis. A thought occurs to me as I look at her more closely. Wait, couldn't you use magic to heal yourself? Well, her magic is probably weak, you know? Parfait shakes her head and sighs. I don't have the ability to heal. None of us do, except for one particular witch who calls herself the Witch Doctor. Oh, really? Witch Doctor? Ooh. Is something wrong? Rumpel shakes his head and gives her a wistful smile. Hmm, that name just sounds familiar. Ooh, maybe they're the ones who cursed him? Oh, wow, that'd be a plot twist. It's likely, you're, it's likely you heard about her from someone else before. Humans do know of her existence, after all. A witch? She's not a fairy? No. For some reason, I had thought fairies would be more likely to heal people, not witches. Well, don't be so discriminatory. Don't be so stereotypical. She is indeed a witch. That is what they say. Though I have never met her myself. Oh, okay. She is the only person. She's the only one who can heal illnesses with magic. She doesn't associate with other witches though, and keeps to herself. Okay. Nobody know. Nobody has known where to find her for a very long time. Oh. Suffice it to say, we could never seek out her help. Uh, seek out help from her, even if we wanted to. You know. Parfait shakes her head. Oh, maybe. Maybe yeah. Okay. So never mind. Maybe Rumpel. I I was getting ahead of myself and getting really abstract and out of it. Out. Like thinking out there, but like maybe Rumpel has, of course, heard of her in passing. But also, like, you know, the the whole witch doctor thing is like, oh, maybe like he has the thought of trying to seek her help and trying to break his curse, kind of thing. I don't know. Maybe that's what he's thinking right now. No, unfortunately not. Rumpel looks grim, but Parfait quickly dissipates the gloomy atmosphere with a clap of her hands. If Dolore were here, she would say, "All right, story time's over." Haha, <laughs> it's done. That was all very interesting. Interesting, but it does not help anyone really. It does not really help anyone. Wow, I got that mixed up. Your body is the way it. The, your body is the way that it is because of the Great War. Then, yes. Uh, like I told you before, the Great War has made my body a lot weaker. This is something that cannot be healed, and I don't have an heir, so. 
Uh, Parfait looks about ready to say something but goes silent. She has a sad look on her face and I don't understand why. Anise immediately speaks up. Uh, I think I'll be okay, Lady Parfait. I was actually going to go on an errand run in a few minutes. Alright. Do you need any help? I would be more than happy to escort a lovely lady like yourself around town. Anise pulls the list out from her bag nearby and holds it out. There are only a few items on the list, as far as I can see. Don't worry about it, Rumple. It's all that it's not that much at all. Yes. Rumple stares at the list, his expression suddenly smooths into something more serious. What? May I have that? Oh, Anise hands him the list and slowly take and slowly he takes a pen out from his pocket. What? What is he doing? I stare I stare as he looks over the list quietly and then scribbles some things down at the down on the bottom. Afterwards, he hands it over to Anise. I've added some things that might be helpful. The herbs on that list are for joint pains, and you might want something a little more general. Oh wow, how does he know all that? Everyone is staring at Rumble with wide eyes. Even Parfait looks impressed. Huh huh, you've used herbs before, Rumble. Uh, maybe? I don't remember, but for some reason, names came to the top of my head as I was looking at the list. Oh, okay, thank you. Huh <laughs> huh. It is always my pleasure to help a lovely lady. Now, Anise, please let me accompany you to town. I would love to help with whatever I can, and more names might come. And more names might come to me. Wow, that sounds nice. Thank you, Rumple. Rumple turns to me, a mischievous smile on his face. Oh no. Wherever, whenever he looks at me like that, I know he's going to suggest something ridiculous. You come along. Yes, Princess Hana should accompany us for the experience. For the lols. <laughs> I do not need experience. How are you going to shower people with compliments if you know nothing about them? Being out in town will be good for you. You can't tell me what to do. Rumple has a point. The more you expand your world, the more willing you are to learn about. You, the more willing you are to learn more about people. I do not need to be lectured. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, oh, princess. It wasn't meant to be a lecture. It's just a friendly suggestion. You know. I'm just letting you know that I that experience is invaluable. Right. Come on, princess. Let us escort the lovely, lovely Anise around town. What about your work? It's like. Rumble puts a finger to my lips and grins. That's exactly why he wants to go. He needs to get out of work. No one seems to have thought of that, so it will be our little secret. Oh my god. Get away. I slap his hand away, but he just grins at me jovially. How did I, how did I get dragged into this? Well, I, I made you. Please, don't stay out too long. We won't. Okay, off we go. Alright. So I make my way into town with Rumple and Anise. The majority of the conversations we have are one-sided, with Rumple giving us both the usual compliments. He never seems to tire of it. Rumple helps Anise pick, a, pick certain herbs and a few other medications, and accepts all the compliments she gives him with a triumphant smile. I know Anise knows about herbs because she's helped me before, but how does Rumple know so much about them? Right? That is the mis that is the first mystery behind him. This must be part of the past that he doesn't remember. Yes. Anise enters a store by herself at one point, leaving me alone with Rumple. Uh, I'm a mysterious man, aren't I? <laughs> I turn to look at him and notice the easy smile adorning his face. A man with amnesia is full of secrets, after all. I bet you are even more curious about me. Women always love mysterious men. Yes. <laughs> I do not particularly care. Uh, but princess, if my curse is my amnesia, then shouldn't you care somehow? As partners, we're going to help each other out, right? Oh, I do not see how I can help you with your, ne your, with your amnesia. Yes, uh, maybe this is a spell that is only broken by true love's kiss, shall we see? No. Like hell, I love you right now. He leans toward me with a playful smile on his face. I am accustomed to this behavior by now, so this does not faze me, and I merely sigh at his nonsense. You already said yourself that you need to gather entries from some kind of journal. Ah, uh, princess, you're no fun. A little kiss wouldn't hurt anyone. No. I would die before I kiss you. <laughs> princess, that's so sad. <laughs> he says that, but he is still smiling. Why is he so unfazed by everything I say to him? You only ever have terrible suggestions. It was a mistake to trust you might it was a mistake to trust you might have good advice. Wow. But I have great ideas. <laughs> you haven't helped with my curse at all. Uh, I have been trying though. It's true. Uh, you haven't even told me how to get a good deed. Uh, I told you before, princess. Compliments makes a person happy, and making a person happy is a good deed. So you flirting with women and using shallow compliments on, on them is a good deed? Uh, on the surface, the compliments may seem shallow, but if you swim a little deeper, complimenting people cannot be a good deed. 
But making them happy is. Yes, that's true. All you have to do is listen to people, sympathize with them, maybe get to know them, and you can make them happy by doing even small things for them. Women enjoy the compliments, princess. Uh-huh. Besides, how could I see such beauties and not compliment them? It would be a disservice. Oh my god. You give, a, you give compliments to people you do not even care about. It's a princess. <laughs> Rumpel's voice trails off as he stares past me. His smile falters for a few moments, and, I look a and a look of confusion ripples his features. I turn to follow his gaze and see a small boy staring at us. He is shyly hiding behind some kind of notebook. What? Oh! What are you doing here? There's that seriousness again. It was the same thing that happened when he added something to the list for Parfait. Then suddenly, the expression changes into Rumpel's usual bright smile. Okay, hello there! Would you like to come and speak with us, young sir? No. Uh, you don't remember me, sir. Oh, a person from his past! Oh, do I know you? Oh, I used to come to your clinic. You saved me before. <gasps> He's a doctor! Ooh, the boy draws closer to us, still hiding shyly behind his notebook. Ah, I'm sorry, little sir. I'm afraid that my memories are a bit scrambled right now. I can't even, re I can't even remember my own name. Can you tell him? Really? Oh, tell him! Where is Anise? Why is she taking so long? The last thing I want is to hear a conversation between Rumpel and some child. Is he going to shower this boy with compliments too? Oh, it's a shame that I can't remember a boy as bright as yourself. And there it is. <laughs> I'm not that bright, sir. Not as bright as you, but I want to be. Oh, he holds up his notebook, which has a small name scribbled in the corner. The words, my dreams, are written on the front cover in cursive letters. Oh, that's cute. What's this? Uh, I want to be just like you when I grow up. So I, star so I started a book of dreams, just like my mom told me to. She said I could become a doctor too, to, uh, so long as I tried my best. So yeah, so she's a doctor. A doctor? Yes, you forgot that you were a doctor, sir. Yes. Well, we already kind of... We already kind of picked up on that when the boy said like, Oh, you, you know, you saved me. You know, I visit your clinic. Rumpel, a doctor? Yes. Uh, the boy continues to hold out the book and finally, Rumpel takes it and flips it open to the front page. Rumpel is holding the book so close to his face, so I cannot see it. I rise to the tips of my toes and attempts to look over his shoulder. At first, Rumpel does not notice me as he stares at the page. Then belatedly, he realizes I am there and lowers the book so that I can read too. I lean so close to him, our shoulders brush. My eyes scan over the page quickly. The handwriting is crude, barely readable actually, but I can still make out the gist of it. Rumpel slowly reads the words aloud. When I'm older, I want to be exactly like the kind doctor that saved me when I had no one else to go to. Ah, ah. The boy's face, is, the boy's face flushes as Rumpel repeat, re reads his words aloud before his curious gaze lands on me. Uh, I don't remember you. Yeah. I look at the boy, irritated. Well, of course not. Are you the doctor's wife? No! Rumpel suddenly looks up, eyes wide. He looks down at the boy, then at me, his face suddenly solemn. Uh, I am surprised by the words that leave his mouth next. Yes, she is. What? Huh? Why? Uh, he takes my hand in his and looks down at me, an almost sad look on his face. <gasps> Maybe he did have a wife, but then she died. Because he couldn't save her? Hmm. <gasps> ooh, ooh, this is already getting interesting. <laughs> Yeah, he takes, a, he takes my hand in his and looks down at me, an almost sad look on his face. What is wrong with him? Pull my hand away, slap him. Nah, I think slapping him would be too harsh. Let's just pull our hand away. That's like the the most like unviolent way to, to do it. He has such a strange look on his face. Slowly, I tried to pull my hand away, but Rumpel holds tightly to it. The sadness in his eyes become intense anxiety, and I see something like fear dancing in his eyes. I... you really think it was my fault? What? What? Uh, uh, sir? Rumpel squeezes my hand a little too tightly. He looks at me desperately. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. What? Let, let me go. I finally managed to pry my hand free. Rumpel looks at me for a few moments, almost bewildered, and then his eyes suddenly widen. He looks back at the journal, then at me. Oh, I think I... I blanked out. I'm sorry, princess. All at once, the sheepish smile breaks into something cheerful again. He is still smiling at me, even though I was so curt with him. So Rumpel is so confusing. The boy looks bewildered. Don't worry about that, little sir. This only this one here is a feisty thing. I deserve whatever she just did. So she's not your wife, sir. Oh, should I have slapped him? <laughs> what? 
Rumble looks a little surprised and then he laughs. Unfortunately, no. This the beautiful lady. The beautiful lady here is not my wife. Okay. Well then, Rumpel absently rubs at the back of his neck as he looks up at the sky. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what just happened, but it seems like I recovered something very important today, or the beginnings of something important. So I should have slapped him. Oh my god. Something important? Is he talking about a memory? Yes. He hands the book back to the boy, then he leans down and sets a hand on the boy's head. Oh, the, a bell chimes behind us as a niece comes out of the store, carrying a bag filled with what I assume are herbs and medicines. The boy once again cowers behind his book. Oh, who's this? A wonderful little sir that helped me regain a very important memory. Oh, an, an important memory? Rumple stands, looking triumphant. I, my good lady, I, I, my good lady, am a doctor. Yes. Oh, really? Yes, truly. Uh, Rumple turns back to the boy who, asked a f who he asked a few more questions. He even asked the boy his name, but much to my surprise, the boy shakes his head. What? Uh, I'm sure you told me your name, but I don't remember it. Ah, uh, it is like my curse. No one remembers me being a princess, and no one remembers Rumpel's true name. Rumpel thanks the boy. Um, Rumpel thanks the boy again many times over, and even buys him a few pieces of candy. The boy's eyes are practically glowing with excitement, and he does not stop smiling. After we see him off and start to head back to the tavern, I begin to contemplate. I am curious about something. Oh, yes. You said that you needed to fill your journal with memories in order to get them back, but the journal you just read wasn't yours. It appears not. Oh, so maybe he needs to read multiple other people's journals. It seems that the three entries that trigger my memories just need to be written by people I know. Reading them triggers a memory, and then the full entry pr ap probably appears in my journal. Oh, yeah. Huh. I, ought to I ought to check it when I get back. I see. That's, yeah. But even without looking into the entry, a memory came to your mind? Rumpel gives a short, distracted nod. Uh, it's not complete, so I'm hoping that something really has appeared in my journal. It must- it feels like it must, considering I remembered something so important. Do you remember anything else at all? Uh, hmm. Uh, the young man that we just met, I believe that he used to come watch me work before. I knew him, he used to look up to me, he was a sweet child. The memory is foggy, but yes, I believe something did happen to him. He became... ill. The details of how I saved him must be in the journal. Even though this does not pertain to my curse, I am curious what his journal might say. Same. I can't remember fully, but the memory feels sad somehow. He turns to me, eyebrows knit together. It is strange to see him with such a serious expression on his face. I really am sorry about earlier, prin earlier princess. I think I was on the verge of a memory, but then it got, s it got tangled up in my head. I am surprised by his sudden change in topic. I shake my head slowly. He is quiet for a few moments before suddenly his smile comes back and he laughs jovially, telling us that there is no point in worrying. Okay, at the town's outskirts, I turn, feeling my feeling eyes on my back, but no one is there. Hmm. Fascinating. We give Parfait the medicines we purchased in town as soon as we arrive back at the Marchant. Then Rumpel proudly announces that he is a doctor to anyone that will listen to him. Everyone seems happy for him, save for the Marchant patrons that find Rumpel annoying, who are mostly men. Afterwards, Rumpel asks Anise if he might be able to take over the medications for Parfait, if only because Anise is busier than him. Rumpel hasn't been at the Marchant long, and yet he's already found something to help break his curse. And then there's me. <laughs> soon, it's okay, we'll get it eventually. I do not think anyone will be able to help me. At the end of the night, when I finally have time for, to myself, I return to my room to rest. Alright. Yeah. Next day. The next day, I am sent right back to my chores. Rumpel is nowhere to be seen in the morning, and Anise says it is because he is tending to Parfait. He appears later in the afternoon, still full of smiles and silly fla flattery as he goes back to serving. How does he have so much energy? I know, right? Jeez. And then the end of the day. At the end of the day, I plop down on the seat on the settee to rest. My legs are weak from all the walking I have done today, and I can still feel the tiredness in my arms from all the sweeping with Mr. Broom. Princess? Well, I notice a new standing beneath the doorway, smiling at me uncertainly. Thank you for your work today. Why is she thanking me for work I obviously do not want to do? <laughs> she doesn't need to do that. It's not as if I've asked to do any of this. Oh, but but you still help, yeah. And niece nervously shifts on her feet. What? So I um I just wanted to say thanks. Aw. When I do not make any effort to continue speaking with her, Anise gives a nervous little nod before heading back toward her room. 
Uh, not long after her departure, I hear an exuberant and familiar voice. I should count my lucky stars, for they are giving me a rare opportunity to meet with my lovely princess this late at night. Oh god. I should have gone to my room. <laughs> Rumpel stops before me, winking. The moonlight on your face makes your beautiful eyes sparkle like the most precious gold, princess. <laughs> oh god. Oh, I am not in the mood for your flattery. But princess, flattery is just a compliment. Uh, but flattery, but princess, flattery is just a compilation of compliments. Everyone loves compliments. I do not care for your compliments. Or Lady Anissa's thanks either. Oh, he heard that. Oh yeah. You should learn to let people spoil you. I stare at him. That is the last thing I had ever expect anyone to s expected anyone to say. My whole life I have been called spoiled and rotten, the ice princess, right? I was gonna say, it was like, we were born a princess, so like, we have all the luxuries in the world kind of thing. But I, I, I get what he means, like, spoil as in, like, affection-wise. Even Delore and Parfait wanted, want me to do these good deeds because they think I am incapable of goodness. I clench my fists and continue to stare at him, not understanding the swell of emotions inside of me. Why is he being so nice to me? Uh, your first lesson is learning how to let people spoil you. He draws back his hand, reaches into his pockets, and presents me with a small yellow bag. What is that? What's this? For you, my sweet princess. Accept the gift, don't accept the gift. I don't know! <laughs> Do I accept it now? I feel like it's right. He's like, the first lesson is to, you know, to learn how to let people spoil you, right? But at the same time, it's like, you know, we need to, we need to get to, we need to show some fight, we need to show some fire, and like, you know, rebellion and shit like that. Oh god, just accept the gift. I, I am not used to receiving gifts out of the blue. Uh, what a shame. I would give you so many gifts I could, if I could, princess. Why? Uh, because people are moved by gifts when they come from the heart. I take the small bag from Rumpel's hands and look, and look at it for a few moments. Besides, this is both a thank you and an apology gift. Oh, a thank you for accepting me as your partner and an apology for my behavior yesterday. I don't remember what I did, but both you and the boy seem frightened. Oh, okay. Oh. So I did good? <laughs> I look down at the little bag, I open it up, and inside is a little white chocolate uh, piece fashioned into the shape of a flower. A lily. Aw, it's not much, but you absolutely must accept it, princess. Otherwise, my guilt would drown me in dark in dark shadows of sorrow for the rest of my of time. Yes, I blah, blah. Lilies are my favorite flower. Aw, he knows. He remembers. They say you give a white lily to someone you enjoy spending time with. Oh, and in floral language, they also stand for purity and, maj and majesty. Oh, he winks at me. You don't have to wink like that. Perfect for you, princess. Why? Why what? Why would you give this to me? No matter what you say about doing things nice- Ah! No matter what you say about doing nice things for people, I don't see how that applies to me. And why would you thank me for being your partner? I do- I did not even want to be your partner at first. Yeah. But you do now? Oh, You got me! <laughs> I am unable to withhold my surprise. Rumpel raises an eyebrow, then sighs. Princess, you don't trust compliments, do you? Mother always told me that people were two-sided, that they'd say anything to make you believe they were your friend. No. Uh, never fear, my princess, my sweet princess. I'll make sure I compliment you until you learn to accept them. But, really, I should have like, not accepted it, and then he would have given it to me anyways, and you, we would have been touch, more touched that way. What? But, ah, uh, here comes my other bad ending. <laughs> God damn it! No buts. I derive my happiness from making ladies like yourself happy. Uh, the compliments may seem strange to you, but don't worry, you'll see it in time. See what? The sincerity. The connections between people. You assume I'm just a flirt, but I get to know an awful lot of peop an awful lot about people. It's the reason I can guess so much about you. Uh, what could Rumpel possibly know about me? Uh, so, what do you think? Are you more attracted to me now because of my mysterious aura? Or my doctorly sophistication? No. <laughs> he leans closer to me, his eyes sparkling. I can be your own personal doctor. Oh, go away. Shh, I will slap you if you touch me again. <laughs> Rumpel pulls back and raises both of his hands in surrender, but the smile does not leave his face. Okay, let's try to be a more hard, play hard, hard to get more often. You really are hopeless, aren't you? Do you think so? I thought that the events from today might have proven otherwise. Oh, speaking of which, I read over my journal earlier. Did they, anything, did they say anything? His expression becomes oddly solemn. Nothing? Shall I enlighten you? Sure. 
Why would you tell me all of this? Because we're partners. Oh, you're not interested? I thought you might be, since I was your partner. Yes. If I don't listen, you'll still tell me regardless, so feel free to share. Rumpel sighs as he flips the journal open. Uh, unfortunately, it was not much. The memory began coming together again as I was reading, but a lot of it still doesn't make sense. I glanced down at the entry as he stopped. I glanced down at the entry he has stopped at. Look at the bottom of the page, princess. Oh, what? I follow his gaze to the bottom of the page and pause, noticing a, con a conspicuous gap. What is it? There's no signature, and I always sign the end of every entry I write. I wonder if that might be the final piece of the puzzle. Maybe it's because it's your name. The final piece of your curse. If, yeah, the final piece of your curse. My name. Uh, if my name refuses to show up in the book, it may very well be the final memory I need to regain. You believe that the signature will be what gives you your true name, then? Yeah. I have a feeling that might be the case. It was the first thing I noticed when the entry appeared. That would explain why the boy in town didn't know my name either. And there is something else. Something else that is missing? The journal entry is cryptic at best, vague, almost like an incomplete puzzle piece. I stare at him, not understanding. Slowly, Rumpa begins to explain. It says here that the boys' family rushed him to my clinic. He had a terminal illness that I could not cure. He was at, a de he was at death's door, and I couldn't save him. But he is still alive, isn't he? He even said you saved him. Uh, yes, there is a resolution in the journal, but it is not very helpful. I glance down at the journal entry as Rumpel cont continues to speak. I refused to give up. I knew that there had to be a way to save the boy. I never gave up on my patience. In the journal entry, I describe someone who came to help me save the boy. He lifts the book and points to the words, reading them aloud. I met her for the first time tonight. She told me she had some way to help the boy, so we struck a deal. I hope I do not come to regret this. Oh! He snaps the journal shut, startling me. He sighs as he runs a hand through his hair. That's it. Someone helped me somehow, and I made a deal. I'm assuming this is related to my curse, but I can't say how. Why did you write so vaguely? I wish I could ask my past self the same question. So in the end, you're still not sure when you were cursed. Rumpel pauses and shakes his head. I believe it started here, not the curse, but the events that led to it. There's a reason that this is the first memory to be triggered, it's important. For a few moments the two of us are quiet, Rumpel's curse is a mystery, not because he is hiding it like Karma is, but because he does not understand it himself. Uh, after a few moments, Rumpel begins to laugh, breaking the silence. I look at him, startled. What's so funny? Oh, it's not funny, it's just... Uh, this is all very mysterious, isn't it? Yes, it is. And my mysterious past makes me more alluring, doesn't it? Nah, shh. Only Rumpel could take such a serious moment and change it into this. I know. Well, what do you think, princess? Are you drawn into the mystery of it? Uh, I'm just curious. I have no choice. You'd tell me even if I didn't want to know. <laughs> oh, but you do. I can see the curiosity in your lovely golden eyes. And I could see it earlier today, too. Uh, thank you for accompanying me to town. I believe that I only met the boy because you were there to guide my way. <laughs> we were looking for medical supplies. That boy appeared through mere coincidence. No, it was more than coincidence. It was destiny. Fine, whatever you say. <laughs> Listening to him is exhausting. It makes me realize how tired I am. And all of these revelations are making, me, are making my head spin. I'm going to bed now. I'm too tired for this. Yes, it, it has indeed been a busy day. We will continue this enlightening discussion some other time. Ah, uh, perhaps. Maybe. I turn to walk away with a little chocolate in my hands. As I walk back toward the darkness of the hallway, Rumpel's soft voice echoes behind me. Sweet dreams, pr my princess. Huh, okay. <laughs> chapter 4, or cha the second chapter. A compliment's value, okay. Oops, sorry. I, I clicked on that title card a little too fast, but you, we all saw it anyways. Whatever. Our compliments is value. So, we waited, but the children didn't come, did they? They promised they'd be back today. We even crossed pinkies. Promises are futile, dearest heart. Oh, but... I've told you before and I'll tell you again, people are selfish creatures. They will always put their own well-beings before others. No one does anything selflessly. To put your trust in someone is weakness, Hana. Even those that make promises will only keep them if it benefits them. And you, my sweet, were obviously mo not beneficial to those children. Yes, mother, continue to ruin my childhood further. So they didn't like playing with me? No, they did not. Oh. Come here, darling. You do not need those other children. The two of us can play together as we always do. I can always trust you, mother. 
Of course, my love. Of course. That's what she wants you to think. My head feels foggy. Maybe it was because it took me forever to fall asleep yesterday. And then, to make things worse, I ended up having that dream. Mother, you're the only one I can trust. Right? No. <laughs> I slowly slide out of bed, out of my bed, and make my way over to my dresser. The little bag is still where I left it last night. I opened it up and let the little white lily chocolate. Bleh. I opened it up and let the little white chocolate lily fall into my hand. Aww, ooh, it's so pretty. I can't eat it. Is he really trying to help me? Yes. I remember his face yesterday and his bright smile as he presented this to me. I slowly run my fingers across the delicate white petals. He couldn't have known lilies were my favorite flower. There is no reason to be sentimental about something like this. It's just silly. I am about to put the flower back in the bag, but I stop eyeing it once more. Slowly, I bring it to my lips and bite off a small petal. It is actually pretty good. Yeah. I stuff the little flower back into the bag and make my way down. Make my way downstairs. The marchant is not busy this early in the morning, but everyone is. Uh, but everyone is starting on their chores. At least I assume as much when I see Anise and then Waltz, who is helping her stack things. Then I hear rising voices and realize that not all is calm. At least I don't have to pretend to be something I'm not. Oh no, it's him and Karma again, going at it again. You say you're not pretending when you go around flirting with all the all the female patrons day in and day out. You cannot seriously mean all the drivel you spout. Karma and Rumpel stand on opposite sides of a table, staring each other down. A teacup filled with what looks to be cool tea sits close to Karma, abandoned. Uh, flirting with a lady is not a crime. Uh, one day your flirting is going to get you into into even more trouble than it already has. I've never had a lady said I mistreated her, not once. Oh, I'm sure many could attest to being more than slightly annoyed. Uh, you're only jealous that I can speak to ladies without a disguise, aren't you? Oh, wow. All oh, these blows, these these shots. Karma slams his hand down on the table, shaking it. Yeah, the tavern goes, grows quiet. Waltz looks over, his eyebrows furrowed with worry. If you so much as to make if you so much as make one more comment about my curse, uh, then stop making comments about how I speak. The two continue to glare at each other. It almost looks as if Karma might circle the table and slap him, but the fight freezes as Durian strides up to the two men. Hey now, break it up. It's too early for the two of you to already be at, be at each other's throats. Right. But he started it. Don't be, don't be like children. All I did was make a comment. He was the one that picked a fight. Uh, there you go again, twisting words. Uh, Jurian stomps on the ground. The two men once again turn to look at her. Uh, it's my job to break up unnecessary fights, and I will do it. If you two must continue fighting, go do it somewhere else, like the forest, where you can't disturb anyone. Both men turn away from each other, obviously agitated. Rumpel's expression is cloudy as he makes his way over to the bar to begin helping, helping set the tables. Jurian notices me watching. She waves at me with a terse smile on her face. Sorry you had to wake up to that, princess. I shrug as I make my way over to Mr. Broom. It is like waking up to two children arguing. I know, right? Agreed wholeheartedly, yes. Jury in sighs before looking at me thoughtfully. Maybe you could have a word with Rumpel later. I have no idea how their arguments even started, but maybe you can get to the bottom of it. I am not a babysitter. <laughs> but I'd heard the two of you were partners? No. Doesn't mean I babysit him. Anyway, hopefully this doesn't happen again. Good luck with your work today, princess. Yes, you too. Jiren walks off, vigilant as always. I notice Garland looking at her from the bar, a slight frown on his face. I start working around the tavern, starting with starting first with the cleaning and then with the stacking. Delora makes snide remarks about my slowness as I work, and I try my best to ignore her while occasionally throwing her insults back at her. Her insults back at her, yes. It is as if she has nothing better to do. Indeed. The door to the tavern opens and Parfait steps inside with a bright smile. She looks more energetic than usual. I wonder if this is because of Rumpel's medicine suggestions. Uh, yes, maybe. Later, I manage to catch Rumpel when the two of us are both on break. He looks pleased to see me until I mention Karma. Why were the two of you fighting earlier? Uh, what a sad day it is that the princess talks about another man to my face. <laughs> I'm just... just answer me. I was getting ready for the events of today, as always, speaking to the lovely woman who filled her in and out of this place. When the beast appeared behind me. <laughs> Even his insults are dramatic. Oh, but he <laughs> Yes, at this point she doesn't know that, like, karma can literally turn into a literal beast. 
<laughs> your flirting is dis your flirting is distracting me, he proclaimed. Well, your flirting is annoying. Uh, but all I'm doing is complimenting women. I'm not impeding anyone's work. Uh, I thought that the only reason he was calling me out on such a thing was because he was actually jealous. You should you should have seen his scowl. And here we go. So I politely told him to mind his business, but he was relentless and he, he and when he continued to insult my demeanor. Uh, well, I had to say something back, but I wasn't the one to start the fight. I swear they both really do sound like children, but no doubt Karma would be blaming Rumple, right? Princess, you don't really think I'm so con con eh. Princess, you don't really think I'm so confrontational, do you? I think Karma is far more confrontational than Rumple, but it does not help that Rumple always snaps back at him, right? The two of you are both at fault. But Princess, no. In the end, you were in the end you were still having a childish argument. I think that Rumple might try to protest again, but and, and am surprised when he shrugs his shoulders and sighs. Yes, it was childish, because that man is a child. Ah, uh, you were a child too, I rolled my eyes. <sighs> ah, your irritated scowls chills my heart, princess. Uh, I feel a tinge of excitement. No, I'm leaving now. There is really no point in having this conversation. It is a problem between Karma and Rumple. They aren't children, they can figure this out on their own. Oh, princess of my heart, why must you depart so early? Because you're annoying me. <laughs> I ignore Rumple and leave him standing where he is as I return to my shift a little early. Honestly, I would much rather focus on work than Rumple. He can be just as tiring, if not more. Uh, though, after what happened last night, I do not think that he is as terrible as I thought, right? Like, come on. This is the thing you need to work out, because you guys started it. The days go on, and Rumple and I speak only briefly during our breaks. Every day I eat another piece of the lily until only one is remaining. Ah, okay. Uh, one afternoon, just before my break, Rumple approaches me with a mischievous smile on his face. What? My lovely princess, how are you today? What do you want? Your cold shoulder is enticing. Oh my God. I have one more table to serve, do not bother me. Uh, but princess, I've decided I know exactly how to teach you to be good. All of your other lessons have been useless so far. Uh, please, just trust me. Oh, to put my trust in someone's... To put my trust in someone is weakness. I'm going to teach you how to flirt. What? <laughs> teach me how to flirt. Teach me, teach me how to flirt. What? The first step to flirting is eye contact, princess. Wait, but why are you... Rumple points at my customer, a young man sitting right beside the window. The second is to smile. Smile, princess, because I'm sure you look even more stunning when you do. Then you start a conversation with him. Uh, body language is important. There are certain signals that key men into the fact that a woman is interested in them. But I don't want to lead him on. <laughs> I think playing with your hair is one. A gentle tap on the shoulder is another. I should have expected Rumple to spout this sort of nonsense. Um, princess, the customer's been waiting for a while now. Is something wrong? I notice the customer looking at me expectantly. He is just some he is just some man, a usual customer that I actually see often. Oh, and princess, don't forget the compliments. Make them as delicate and, illus and illustrative as you can. Ugh. I move away from Rumple before he can muddle my thoughts any further. Already my feet feel like lead. I find myself staring at the man for far too long. The way he stares back at me, his expression so unreadable, suddenly makes me feel more uncomfortable. Do I really have to do what Rumple says? No! <laughs> I stop in front of the man and set down his tray, my eyes still on his. I do not have to follow Rumple's advice, but for some reason my lips quirk. The smile on my lips though the smile on my lips though lasts for all of eh, the smile on my lips though lasts all of a half second. Are you okay? Attempt to flirt, do not flirt. I'm not gonna flirt! <laughs> no! I'm not gonna flirt. This is the one thing I'm not- I am most definitely not gonna do just because, you know, to be nice to Rumple. No. It's not my- it's not my style, you know? Ma'am? My face is hot, but not with embarrassment. The more I think about Rumple's proposal, the more irritated I become. <sighs> it's nothing. His eyebrows fall a bit a little- Ah, his eyebrows fall a little bit as he frowns. I was doing so good! I was doing so well! His eyebrows fall a little bit as I frown at him. I never smile when I serve food, and everyone knows that. Perhaps a few, perhaps for a few moments, this man was hopeful. Oh, really? But hopeful for what exactly? Thank you for the food. I cannot believe that Rumpel wanted me to flirt with a man I do not even know. 
Right? Like, this doesn't make sense to me! No! Just the thought of it makes me annoyed. I turn to stride away, my feet thumping too heavily on the floor. Ah, princess. Leave me alone. P princess, we're not done. I do not care. I ignore everyone's gaze as I make my way as quickly as I possibly can up the stairs to and to my room. There, I collapse on my bed and lay there with my arms outstretched. Why would I have ever? Why would I have ever even thought I, of taking Rumpel's advice? Damn it! I, I screwed up. <laughs> but like that still doesn't make sense. Like why would I try to attempt flirting? Oh my god! Hours go by and eventually I realize that th that it is time to help a niece with the night chores. Now I am helping her restock. Now I am helping her restock some of the bottles with Walt's. <laughs> god, sorry. Now I am helping her restock some of the bottles that Waltz and Karma brought back from town. Yeah. I hope Anise does not mention what happened earlier today. I slip out of bed and head down to the main area of the tavern. The room is mostly quiet by the time I go downstairs. Parfait and Dolora are talking to each other at a table. Karma passes me by as I walk downstairs. He looks exhausted and oddly frustrated. I make my way over to Anise, who is already putting bottles on the shelves. Oh, Princess, are you okay, okay now? I am fine. Now, what did you need me to do? Yes. If Nice explains how restocking works, she shows me the tape. She shows me the labels on the shelves and explains that the empty spots are where the new bottles go. It is not a hard job, and no one and one I can easily do without thinking too hard. For a while, the only sounds that can be heard in the marchant are the bottles clinking against each other. Underneath that is the murmuring between Parfait and Delora. I have no idea what they are talking about, but they look serious, so it must be something important. Um, so princess, can I ask what life was like at the palace? Right. She cannot remember working in the palace before. Uh, I don't mean to pry, I was just trying to make a conversation. I was just trying to make conversations. I would rather not. Ah, uh, okay. Eventually, Parfait and Dolores stand from their seats and move to another room to continue their conversation. Anise breaks the silence again. The tavern is nice when it's quiet like this, isn't it? You can hear the sounds outside if you open a window. Yeah, my hands move stiffly, placing bottles on shelves by label. All I want to do is to all I want to do is get the work done and then return to my room. It was like this at the old place that I used to work. Uh, I was hired by a rich family to be their maid. Their mansion was a beautiful was a beautiful place. You could hear the crickets if you were by the windows on the bottom floor. It seems like her memory has been twisted by my curse, so she cannot remember working at the palace. All she remembers is working for a rich family. Uh huh. It was a nice place, princess. There was a pr there was a girl close to my age that I had that had a radiant smile. Ah, <laughs> that's Emmeline. Radiant smile. She must be talking about Emmeline. Yep. The head of the mansion is a really kind man, and she grows qu suddenly quiet. A look of confusion coming to her face. She pauses and then shakes her head. What? I can't seem to remember everyone that was there, but I'm pretty sure they were all good people. At least I'd like to think so. I was just a bad maid. Aw. She was. Because of her, Dolores' dress was torn. Uh, I, I was too ashamed to tell one of the mistresses that I couldn't save her doll. Save her doll? And Nice looks down, her smile wistful. I was fired on my first day because I couldn't save one of the mistresses' doll. Dolls, yeah. I was the one cleaning her shelves that day, and when I went in, I saw a crow that came- that had come in through the wind- I had saw a crow that had come in through the open window and was pecking at one of the dolls. Oh, so that's what happened. Aww. I shoot it away, but it was too late. The doll had a little rip in its dress, and I was fired for not doing my job properly. Ah, so it wasn't a niece who ripped Dolores' dress, but a bird? Is this why Dolores insisted a niece deserves an apology? What happened after you were fired? Uh, Lady Parfait found me on the streets. I couldn't go back to my aunt's house, not after what happened. Uh, she never liked me anyway. Anise's face clouds briefly with sorrow, but the expression is short-lived. Aw, I can never forget the day I met Lady Parfait. I told her I would be able to help her and anyone else that got sick. That I can even do all the cooking since I've been making meals for my father since I was a young girl. I begged her to take me in, and she did. I owe Lady Parfait a lot. Why didn't you go back to your father after you were fired? Um, my father passed away a while ago. My mother died giving birth to me. Aw, oh, my father was an my father was an herbalist, and he taught me a lot while he was still with me. But so before Rumpel came in, I helped Lady Parfait with herbal remedies. Oh, so you have no one. Ah, uh, that's why I thought. But now I have some. That's what I thought. But now I have everyone here. The Marchant is my family now. Family. 
Uh, Princess, we're all happy to have you here too. You really help out around the marchant, and I can tell Rumpel's happy to have you as a partner. The memory of what happened today slowly seeps back into my mind. I cannot help the irritation bubbling up inside me. I know he's a little overwhelming, but I'm pretty sure Rumpel's really trying to help you, just like he's helping Lady Parfait. It is not the same thing at all. Uh, he's trying in his own way, I guess. The two of us continue working until Anise makes another wistful comment. The place I worked before is... The, the place I worked before this. It felt like there was warmth in that gigantic home, but it was stifled. That, pa that place isn't warm at all. I speak the words without even meaning to, and Nice looks up at me curiously. The king suddenly started speaking to me when mother died, but it was not. But it was never enough. Before that, he was cold and distant, and even now, he favors his new wife and children over me. There were people, but they all were. But they all wore fake smiles, and my father, he was the worst of all. I may as well have never existed to him. Princess, I'm sorry. For what? Uh, you're talking about the palace, right? Yeah. The king always seemed so nice. Uh, he puts his kingdom before his children. Anise fidgets nervously. I'm sorry. Apologies are not going to change the past. Sometimes apologizing seems like all we can do when we can't change something that's already happened. Yeah. I think about Anise, who tried to save my doll, and the way I fired her that day. Rumble told me once that all I had to do was listen to people to sympathize with them. Could that, be, could that also be true for finding out the truth? Yes. All I can do is make up for what I did to her is... Uh, apologize to Anise, remain silent. I'm gonna apologize to her. This I will do. This I will do. All I can do to make up for what I did to her is to apologize. I am sorry. Yeah. Anise looks at me, clearly shocked. She stares for a few moments before I scowl at her. Star staring is rude. Uh, oh, I was just... Why are you apologizing to me, princess? It is for something I did that you wouldn't remember. Uh, that I wouldn't remember. Uh, you should tell me. I promise I wouldn't hold it against you. It is not important. Maybe I shouldn't have. Uh, Anissa's eyes are suddenly downcast, and no matter the attempt, her smile isn't as bright as it once was. Ah! <laughs> I quickly finish stacking the bottles on the shelves. I am done. Anise turns to look at me with an unusually tired expression on her face. Thank you for listening to me, princess, and for telling me a bit about yourself, too. I feel like I might have said too much. I do not respond to Anise, but instead choose to head out the front door. Anise asks me where ask where I'm going, but I just ignore her. I think about heading to town, but then reconsider. I decide to head to the forest instead. Dang, I'm so bad at this! Ah, I make my way to the forest clearing. In the dark, everything feels a lot more comfortable. Here, I do not have to pretend to listen to anyone, and I do not have to talk about myself. Ah, uh, I settle down on a rock and stare up at the sky. Oh no, no, I did it! I apologize, but Anise did not even understand my apology. Oh, thank god, I hate it when that happens. Like, the game doesn't immediately tell you if you fucked up or not, and I, it just puts me on edge. And even now, I still cannot bring myself to trust those at the margin. I sigh and find myself speaking aloud. Maybe I am the Ice Princess. Ah, but you- Ah, but have you seen the beautiful sculptures that can be made from Ice Princess? Ugh. What are you doing here? I turn to see Rumpel walking toward me, a broad grin on his face. Ice always sparkles in the sun. It glistens and stands so proudly where it's been sculpted. I stare at Rumpel blankly. He sighs and shakes his head. I'm sorry that one- I'm sorry, that one was particularly bad, wasn't it? Uh, he sits down beside me and his grin falters a little bit. Are you gonna chill out now? Huh? <laughs> I have no white lilies to give you this time, my sweet princess, but I will offer- I will offer anything else you would need for me to apologize for my advice earlier today. I can offer anything. My words, my body. No, 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 no. I cut Rumpel off as I am not in the mood for his usual behavior. You are always like this. All you ever do is flirt. Any meaningful thing you try to say is lost in the flattery you constantly give to people. It is shallow. Ah. Uh, you're right. Yeah. What? I stare at him. Rumpel is still smiling, but it is not the same confident grin he wore earlier. Somewhere deep in my memories, I remember someone telling me off just like this. Many people enjoy flattery, princess, and a lot of people are receptive to flirting. But nothing can measure up to a genuine compliment. But I stand by what I said before, in, what ma in that making a person happy is a good deed. Yeah, I, I, I understand that. I totally get that. But yeah, the flirting thing is just you gotta tone it down a bit. 
Look, I'll show you. Okay. Rumple shifts so that he's looking at. Uh, Rumpel shifts so that he's looking right at me, and I notice that his smile is gone. Hana, of all the women I've met, you are the most straightforward and honest. Maybe many do not have the courage to, or the confidence to exhibit those qualities, and that's why I admire you. And I will always uh, take your words to heart because I know you will always speak the truth. Ah, I looked into Rumpel's eyes, which still have a gentle shimmer despite the darkness. For a few moments, his words flowed around in my head. No one has ever called my bluntness honesty before, and no one has ever complimented me for it. Rumpel told me before that I deserve to be spoiled. Maybe it's because he sees the things I do in a more positive light? Yes. My, my, you're struck speechless by that, speechless by that, aren't you? You look cute with your cheeks so rosy, my sweet princess. I glare at him, and Rumpel just laughs in response. I put a hand to my cheeks, suddenly self-conscious. Rumpel smiles at me, but it is not the usual playful smile. Ask him if he meant it, tell him off. Right now, he mo he almost looks serious. Did he mean what he just said? Ah! Oh my goodness. I don't know. I can't ask if he meant it. He seems like he means it. I don't want to tell him off. Let's say, let's, let's ask him. Oh, come on, please. Maybe this time we can start warming up to him. Ugh. Did you really mean that compliment? Of course I did. I told you, right? Making a person happy is a good deed. I wanted to show you that. Rumpel's compliments do make people happy, even if I do find his words to be very shallow, but that... That felt different. Yeah, flattery is wonderful, but it is usually only concer But it usually only concerns complimenting a woman's physical appearance. Though I do- Though I do that really well, don't I? Yes. Earlier, I bet you made Anise happy too. You were spying on our conversation? I would never. <laughs> I just happened to be making my way down the stairs very slowly. <laughs> oh my god. You don't even know what I was apologizing for. No, but you thought that No, but you thought you had to af you had to after you listened to her, didn't you? I listen far more than you do. <laughs> Princess, you've shattered my heart so many times there are permanent cracks. Uh, did I do the right thing? I don't even know again. But do not worry. The cracks in my heart allow even more of you to make your way into it. Well, <laughs> Rumpel awkwardly laughs when I remain silent. Anyway, there are different kinds of listening, princess. Listening to sympathize is one kind. Trying to put yourself in someone's shoes, trying to understand them, that is one of those ways. Uh, then there is the kind of listening that is shallow. One pretends to listen without, even, without ever letting the words into their heart. Words are fickle things. Mother always told me that people lie and that they would say whatever benefited them. It is foolish to trust words. What if Anise had been lying to me? Why would I put so much? Why would I put so much uh, blind faith in people? Uh, because more often than not, people are good, princess. I let out an exasperated sigh. Sometimes I cannot tell if I am angry or confused by Rumple. Ah, ah! What a beautiful sound! It was as if the sweet wind itself was gently tickling my ear. <laughs> Duh, I slide away from him and scowl. Your scowl is adorable too, and you have such delicate lips. Right. Okay, so, so far what I'm getting at is that we gotta play hard to get with Rumble, but like, in terms of being nice to other people, we gotta be nice to them. Oh my god, right. I am still convinced that th that his earlier compliment was just a lie. How can he say something genuine and then, and then slide right back into this pitiful flattery? Uh, for a moment, silence falls and I, find t and I find to my surprise that it is not awkward being alone with Rumble. Will you accept my apology for earlier? I promise I'll never try to get you to flirt with anyone ever again. Thank you. Besides, if you flirted with another man and then grow fond of him, I would be devastated. <laughs> what, that would never happen. You didn't let me finish. I was going to say that I would be devastated because that would mean that your heart belongs to someone else and my heart belongs to no one. I will steal it like a thief in the night. Oh my god. That will also never happen. Oh, uh, you say that now. If not then, if not that, then I'll settle with making you smile at least once, because I'm sure that you would shine as brightly as the sun if you smiled. Uh, you are unreasonably persistent. Love is a persistent endeavor, princess. A man in love stops at nothing to win over the woman that he so adores. Then you must be in love with that. Then you must be in love with many women. Yes. So I stand up. I would appreciate you just complimenting me when you mean it. Ah, but princess, I mean every one of my compliments. I have no energy to chastise him right now, but I, at least I no longer have the anger inside from earlier. Uh, it's been a long day. I am going to bed. 
Would you like company? No. No. <laughs> I didn't mean... Good night, Rumple. Uh, good night, Princess Anna. I make my way back to the tavern, feeling slight, feeling surprisingly light. Still, even if Rumple's words make me f make me happier than I care to admit, he is not doing a very good job at, of helping me with my curse. I might have to do this on my own after all. No, you say that now, but just just wait, just give it time. Chapter five, the doctor. Okay, there we go, guys. Oh my god, I'm like. I'm like flip-flopping back and forth between getting the right answers and getting the wrong answers. So far it's two for two, I think. Ah oh, man, but anyways, I'm gonna leave it here, you guys. We've done our fair share of two chapters per episode. Uh, my quota has been filled, but so far, Rumpel... Rumpel has been a very, a very uh, uh, eccentric character to deal with. <laughs> His his words and his lines just make me cringe oh so much. But like again, I feel I have a feeling like in spite of all that, and of course that whole revelation of finding out that he's a doctor is like you know there's obviously more to him than just like this flirty you know eccentric personality, and he has shown a little bit of his more like you know his more chill kind of like calm down mode with from his like flirting and shit so i'm really looking forward to seeing more of it develop because at least then like i find him more likable <laughs> not that he isn't like like dis not that he's like you know dislikable right now but it's just his flirting in and his like eccentricity is a little bit much for me but again i'm still willing to give him a chance and i'm hope and hopefully of course our character kana will give him a chance as well like you know but either way, again, I feel like the strategy to his route right now is to basically play hard to get with him and then, you know, like, in terms of being nice, having a chance to be nice to everybody else that's not him, then we, we take that. <laughs> Anyways, we'll see. I'll put my plan into action in the next time when we get back into it. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, for, but for now, you guys, bye!